Hello everybody, George Kenner, how are you today? I'm gonna do a couple of things in the shop and I'm gonna share what I do. Which one should I tell you about first? How about, how about this one? I walked out to my neighbor's trash can area and I saw this table. And of course my mind thinks, <laughs> wood, what's that doing there? And I, I came to realize this was a little boy's desk and one of the table legs had fallen off. After I looked at it, I could understand why someone would just dispose of it. It was, you know, pro probably not that expensively made, but I thought maybe I could fix it. And I've been thinking ever since I bought and I'm waiting for delivery of the X-Tool D1 10 watt laser, I've been thinking to myself, hmm, how do I share this with the little boy and his father? So if I take this and get it all refinished and give it to them, I can actually loan them. And I think that the laser will fit right on top here. If not, I can make a couple modifications to the table and the little boy will have his own little laser platform. I thought to myself, how cool it would be if I were being you know, old enough to be a grandparent and having had little kids, we want to teach them how to make things. We don't do auto shop and sheet metal shop and wood shop like we used to in high school. The STEM program is probably the closest thing to it. And wanting to get our kids involved in doing something to make something and put their inventive skills together, to me, is very important. Okay, next project that I'm gonna address is, this is a hose that's been sitting around in a box. It attaches to my DeWalt planer. Now these planers have a blower system that picks up and blows the chips out. However, this is so strong, the blower on this is so strong, it'll actually break the seal on my Craftsman shop vac. Really, the, probably the best thing for me to do and what I'm going to experiment with is I'm going to make a big material bag that has two drawstrings on it, one at the opening, one at the top, and one at the bottom, and kind of make like a big bellows so that when the chips come out, it, they'll go into the bag. I'll just put the bag right into my trash can, drop the lid. I'm going to be all good, or so I think. We'll go through and test that. I need to change the blades on this machine. There's a small nick in one of them. I haven't used it in, um, I used it quite a bit, and I haven't used it in the last couple weeks. So it's time to flip that blade over and we'll go through that process. If you have any questions, I always put my email address in my videos, send me an email. This video is not going to be sponsored by anyone or is not sponsored by anyone. So if you have any questions, you're going to get a straight answer. Actually, we're not going to be replacing the blades on the DeWalt planer. What we're going to be doing is flipping the direction. When I purchased this, it came with the set of blades that were installed and an additional set of blades. This is the first time that I will be flipping the blades around. I think it's very important that if you're going to buy any tool that's going to have the cutting device, even if it's an M mill, like for the step craft, figure out how complex that is going to be before you go to purchase this. Now, I think I can explain how to do this in about two and a half minutes. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna shoot the clips, I'm gonna go into the studio, and I'm going to sync them up. Let's see how these clips came together. What I'm doing here is I have an adjustable table. I wanna lower the height so it's easier to work on the inside of the planer. I take a piece of tape and put them over power plugs when I'm making a change like this. I wouldn't any want anybody to plug it in and start it to be very dangerous. This is the torque style paddle wrench that comes with the system. You're going to loosen those four bolts and lift the, the cover off. I found that there were some larger wood chips in there and dust debris. I wanted to clean it up. Now, those three paddles are the first things that you're going to take off. You can store them right there in that little tray. That's made for those and different screws. This is the shroud that picks up the chips with the blower. You're gonna remove that and you'll see the straight bar spindle that holds the three different blades. That is a release so that the spindle will lock or unlock. 
you want to make sure that it is locked and it cannot turn when you go to replace them. Now, this is the first screw that I'm going to take out just to show you and give you some orientation. I'll come in at another angle and show you just one screw out. Okay, so now we're going to take all of the screws out of that bar. There's several of them. That is the top of the handle that's magnetically charged. You can take the cover bar off, then you're going to go back in, take the blade, lift it up out, spin it around, and set it right back down in. Now there's three of those blades that you're going to spin and take out that are on that spindle. You'll notice I put my finger on it, I have gloves on. I want to make sure that I don't cut myself any protection you can get that'll still allow you mobility is great. I've put the bar back on with the magnet. There's small little tabs that will line right up. Now this I put on to make the point of a torque pattern. Instead of putting the screws in one, two, three and tightening them in a line, I do it in a staggered method. One, two, three, four. I put them all down and then I come back and tighten them individually, going back and forth. I again go back, I'm going to release and spin to expose the next blade, and there's three of those on the spindle, you'll spin all three. Let's go back out to the garage. I'm going to open up V-Carve and then the box gadget, and I'm going to make the component pieces necessary to make the hose container. We'll come back in here and I'll hook all of those back together and make a presentation very similar to this. This is not really intended as a tutorial for the box gadget in VCAR Pro. Rather, I just want to go through some of the basic working steps so everybody that is not familiar with CENCs has an idea of how to, I do this. First, I measure the material and attach it to the CNC. I open up VCAR Pro and I enter the material data into the program. I go up to the gadgets area and I put in the dimensions of the box that I'd like to have and it integrates into the program. Then I save the tool pass. From there, the UNCNC opens up and this is telling me that I need to change the end mill. So I put the proper end mill into the automatic tool system and then back into UNCNC so that I can integrate the information. I go and home my CNC. This gives it the coordinates where it needs to be. Then I take it to the center of the project to start the cut. And then it's off to the races and I've got the end cut right here. Now let's go into the garage and I'll show you the end products. In a way, I think I'm on a garage shop adventure because sometimes I do things and they don't turn out exactly like I expected. When I opened the box gadget, I had calculated the size of the box and I did it improperly. This is what I ended up with, the pin box. It is, it is not as deep as it is and I needed it to be square, but I ended up with a pin holder. I'm all good with that. This is what I was trying to make first off. And this, I needed two of these boxes to act as the holder head for the hose that goes on to my planer. This is what I ended up with. This is all wood that I'm going to call reconstituted. I didn't pay for any of this. This at one point in its life was actually the footboard of a bed. So now I have what I was planning. I also made a mistake here. The router bit was the, did a double cut. Again, I duplicated the program. The program did a double cut. I had to put shims in a purple heart. I put some maple, some oak, different colors to give it a little bit of accent. But when somebody walks in, they're going to go, who did that and why? Well, the point is, you can do this. Yeah, you need some tools, but you got to start someplace. It, here's where I'm going to go next. This is my X-Tool D100 that just arrived. Now, I've got to leave and go to take care of a medical emergency for a friend. And I'll be back in a couple of days. I'll do a review on this, but this is not as expensive to get started with and has many of the same 
skills or many of the same attributes that uh, a CNC machine would have. So subscribe if you're interested in coming back and watching about this. I'm going to do a full review. I bought this in the 10 watt and 20 watt head system. I'm waiting for a couple more things, the honeycomb and the air assist. When I go get something, I generally buy it with all the accessories that are of value. But come back and um, this will be my next video. Hope to have it out in a week or so. Thank you. Have a good day.